So this is the all new Big Blue CP500. It's got this extending handle here, which is actually pretty cool. Helps keep it just a little bit more compact, but that's not the coolest feature about this. I've been getting a lot of these small solar generators. They're not for emergency preparedness size. They are definitely more for just portable power for laptops, drones, cameras, whatever. In theory, you could run a refrigerator for four to six hours or so off of something of this size, but that's really not the ideal setup. However, a DC fridge would definitely work very well off of something like this. You'd get 10 to 12 hours, if not more, off of something like this. So that'd be good for just a picnic or outside, you know, a party, whatever. But other than that, this is not for emergency preparedness. But this has some of the fastest charging that I have seen out of any small solar generator of a similar size. So I'm going to show you how that works. And we're going to do some testing on this to see if this can really stand up to the specs that it's rated to. So stick around for this video on the Big Blue CP500. Now just on the unit, like I said, it's got an extending handle and it actually has a light here on the back. You see it's pretty bright. It's got a couple of different settings on here. So for lighting up a small area, it's going to work great for that. And the wall charger here has been pretty good. It's basically a 80 watt wall charger. This definitely gets really hot. That's nothing abnormal. These uh, adapter boxes usually get pretty hot. I've got a 100 watt big blue solar panel here as well. This is pretty cool. It's a little hefty, but it's a really cool looking solar panel and it's even got legs built into it. I'm going to be putting that to the test in this video to see just how well the system works. First of all, it is pure sine wave. It has a 537 watt hour battery. The battery is lithium iron phosphate or life PO4. And it's a 500 watt inverter with a thousand watt surge. The charge controller is MPPT, which is really great. We don't ever want to see PWM anymore. And it's a voltage range of 12 to 30 volts and about four and a half amps with a max solar input of 110 watts. So really you're gonna be able to connect a 100 watt panel to this or maybe a 120 watt panel to this and should get some decent results out of it. And we'll put that to the test here shortly. The screen has really good detail. It stays lit. It doesn't turn off while in use, which is really good. You can see this dial here spinning, meaning it's charging, but I've never actually seen this at 100%. I don't know why it doesn't actually go to 100%. It just stays stuck at 99%. Hopefully it's just because it's barely trickle charging in, but it says it's putting in 89 watts right now. So I'm not sure why it's not hitting that 100% mark. I left this for like a half an hour and never hit that 100% mark. Not a huge deal. But one thing that should be noted is if I turn this on right here, press and hold the power button, and I go to turn on the AC power, AC power does not turn on. Even if I click and hold this, doesn't turn on. DC power though, click that on, no problem, turns right on. If I unplug this, and now AC power is on. So you can run DC equipment and the USB equipment while this is charging, but not any AC equipment. AC equipment is just anything that uses this type of plug right here, like a refrigerator or a light or anything like that. Now, one of the most interesting things is you can charge this unit through the USB-C ports. So if you have two USB-C chargers, you can actually charge 120 watts into this in addition to the wall charger and get about 200 watts of wall charging to go in. So you can charge this up pretty quick. And since it's a 537 watt hour battery getting charged at 200 watts, that's not a really fast charge rate. So it's gonna keep your life cycles up. And the life cycles on this are above 2000 life cycles according to the user manual. That also has a car charger, charges about the same 90 watts, just like the wall charger does. And it also comes with this USB-C to USB-C cable, as well as an 18 month warranty, user manual, and a cable carry case, just this little bag here to keep all the little things in. So enough about the specs, I wanna get right into testing this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a 500 watt load on this and just see how well it runs at its highest rated capacity. Basically, if it'll run 500 watts continuously nonstop until the battery is empty, then it's gonna be able to run anything less than 500 watts continuously very easily. Now that is pretty incredible. 52 minutes of nonstop run at full tilt power is very impressive. That's an 87% inverter efficiency rating. So we're right at that one C rate to discharge because we have a 537 watt hour battery. It's running at about 520 watts and it's already charging. I've got the wall charger here and it's not blowing out very hot air. It's, it's warm at most. 
I want to show you just how fast this can be charged up. So I've got the brick charger here, and then this is my USB-C adapter off of my USB-C power plug. And you can see it jumped up to now 150 watts of input. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my River 600 Max. You can see that right here. Got a USB-C to USB-C. I'm gonna plug that in right here. I'll plug this into here. And now you see it goes up by 60 watts to 210 because the input on here is 60 watts. So this is gonna be charged up in about two and a half hours, which is really fast. Definitely one of the fastest wall charging capabilities out of any other solar generator or power station of this size. Actually, the EcoFlow River 600 Max is the only one that can charge faster than this. This charges upwards of 300 watts input from a wall charger. Now the downside with doing the wall charging like this is you have to use a wall charger and two USB-C inputs, but it's just really cool that you can do that or you can disconnect the wall charger entirely and just be charging off of USB-C. And you don't have to have two USB-C, you can be charging just off of one USB-C. But the real question is, with this big blue 100 watt solar panel, how fast will it charge this up? Well, we're gonna have to wait for a sunny day. Many times these reviews take days in order to record, so make sure you click the like button. I truly appreciate that. If you're finding this helpful so far, don't forget to subscribe. And let's go ahead and get this solar charging. Yeah, it is a perfectly clear sunny day, so. I've got the big blue out here with its special solar panel. Now the first issue is the fact that I have a six foot cord here. This is why I don't like uh, connections like this. I like something that can work with MC4. I could probably find uh, an MC4 to SAE connector, but I appreciate when companies think of that ahead of time, because if I want to charge this, basically means I have to have this unit outside, most likely in the shade behind this, or just if the weather turns, I don't want it stuck outside. Okay, right now it's at 30%. I'll bring you in here in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the input and see what it gets. So I don't know if you're able to see that, but it says it's getting 88 watts of input, which is really, really good. I'm quite surprised. It says it's only gonna take four and a half hours to charge up from 30%. So not ideal for getting it charged up in a single day. For this time of year, anything above 85 watts would be incredible. So as far as having something that can charge up quickly with a single 100 watt panel, I'd say this is definitely doing a good job. The panel itself is very high quality. It's pretty incredible that the panel is performing that well because although it's ideal conditions for the winter, because it's the winter, the sun is lower in the sky. So there's more atmosphere for it to go through. So a little bit less usable light comes through for the solar panel. But also in addition, because the solar panel is being kept colder, it performs better. So I would suspect that during the summer, oh, actually that's way too bright. <laughs> uh, you probably get similar results. Overall, I would say this is a good unit for just powering simple things like a laptop or a drone or a camera or a speaker or especially something like a DC fridge. This would be awesome for a small chest DC fridge. It took me over a week since I filmed the last section. So if you appreciate that, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. To my subscribers, thank you very much. You're the reason why I do this stuff. And now I have a Patreon account, so a special thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you're interested in participating in Patreon, you'll get special access to me. I'm also gonna be doing some giveaways, giving away some of these systems like this, and who knows what else. Uh, I, I'm just honored that anyone, actually someone recommended to me that I started a Patreon, so that's why I'm starting it. All of the money that I get from Patreon will go to buying equipment like this, or just emergency preparedness for me to be testing and showing to you guys. That way you know it's 100% unbiased, not getting paid or anything like that for my opinion, which wouldn't change anything anyway, even if I was. It's just the honest truth. This is how it performs. You guys see the test right in front of you. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, be prepared, and I will see you guys in the next video.